Hi everyone, I'm Gertie, and today I'm going to be talking about how to sew the popover dress, which is the dress that I'm wearing and that's on the mannequin right here. This is a dress from my new book called Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses. This is a really fast and easy make, and the book has only been out for a couple weeks now, and so many of you have been making it. So it's great for beginners. You can make it in under a couple hours because it only has one main pattern piece. So in the video today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to get this center front pivot point, how to do the armhole bindings, and how to do the hem. And we'll also talk about cutting. And then I'll do a separate video talking about these little extra touches like the shoulder bows and the great big pockets that are included with the dress. So the really cool thing about this dress, and it was inspired by an actual vintage dress, is that without the belt, it's really just a big tent. And it's, like I said, it's one main pattern piece. And it's this nice big tent, very comfortable. And if you have a petticoat and one of these a little elastic belts, once you put the belt on, you get a great 50s silhouette without a lot of effort. There's no zippers, no buttons, no closures. So very easy to sew. So let's dive right in and get sewing. And we're ready to get started. So make sure you have your copy of Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses. We're gonna be working with the popover dress instructions. So just so you know, this is on pages 85 through 88. So if you have any questions about any of this as we're going through, make sure you refer back to the instructions. There are great illustrations over here and instructions. So you can always refer back to those. Now for your pattern pieces, you're gonna to wanna to get um, those pattern sheets at the end of the book in this nice little envelope at the back. There are five sheets included in this envelope, one for each dress design in the book. And you're gonna be working just with sheet one, the popover dress. All the pattern pieces are on uh, both sides of this sheet. So this is what we're going to be, what we're going to be working with. Um, you are going to trace just the main dress pattern piece and the armhole facing. Unless you want to do the shoulder bows and the pockets, then just trace everything. So you're going to trace your size and make sure to transfer any markings. This is what the main dress pattern piece looks like and says cut four. That's because this is both the front and the back of the dress. It's such a simple design that um, the front and the back are exactly the same. So you're gonna wanna make sure to trace it accurately, make sure that you transfer any of these little T marks. Those are notches that help you match up the pattern pieces. The most important mark on this piece, I'm gonna slide it up so you can see, are these two circles parallel to each other a couple inches away from the side seam. There are other pocket markings towards the middle, but they're a little bit confusing. So I would really recommend, I'm gonna show you an easy way, just transfer those pieces, I'm sorry, those circles, and we're just gonna work with those two, those two marks to place your pockets, and it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to deal with the other ones. Okay, you're also going to need your armhole binding, which is a tiny rectangular piece like this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about cutting. Let's go back to the book for a second. There are what are called pattern maps in the back of the book. And this one's on page 134. I want you to be following along as you're cutting with this pattern map right here. I would recommend for your first popover dress that you use this one, which is on the straight grain. There is a sort of more advanced variation on this dress, which is cut on the bias, and that's what this bias cut variation is right here. And it's a great opportunity to use things like stripes and plaids and uh, gingham and do some fun matching and get a cool bias effect. But for now, we're just gonna focus on this straight grain variation. Here is my dress main pattern piece, which I've cut four of. And I transferred any little notches and by snipping into them, which you can see through my serging right here. And I wanna show you, I'm gonna kind of slide this up so that you can see how I did those two pocket marks. So I made a little chalk X here and here on the right side of the dress because we are gonna be placing those pockets on the right side of the dress if you're gonna be doing pockets later. So make sure you have those. Other than that, I've gone ahead and I've already done some of the first steps on this, which include surging. So if you have an overlocker or as we call it in the US, a serger, you're going to be surging along that front facing line. This is a cut on facing. So this is just going to get folded in. Super easy way to just finish a neckline like that on a straight edge. 
Okay, so I've searched along there so it's finished when we turn it in. I've also done the shoulder and the vertical seams here all the way down. Okay, if you're using your serger slash overlocker to do this, make sure that you're not trimming off any of the fabric because that would change the dimensions of the piece. So you're just, and you can even disengage your knife if that helps on your serger, the blade, so that you can just um, serge right along there and not actually trim away any fabric. Okay, and if you don't have a serger, there are options in the book um, in the first half that tell you other methods for finishing your seams so that they don't unravel. Look how pretty my nails look with this fabric. Okay, on that note, we're going to look at some of the other first steps. I have gone ahead and I have interfaced the front facing. I've done this in a really simple way with using this pre-cut interfacing on rolls. And we were gonna give you a source for that in the video description. This is great, it's already cut to an inch and a quarter, which is what you need. So you just cut it and slap it right on there and iron it on. If you don't have this, don't worry. If you have yardage of interfacing, which you're gonna need for all your dressmaking anyway, just cut inch and a quarter wide strips and apply it to all four pieces in the facing area right there. Okay, the next step I've done is to stay stitch along the edge of that interfacing. This is a really important step and don't be tempted to skip this one because this is cut slightly on the bias here and it is a v-neck obviously, so it will stretch out with wear when you're putting it over your head, when you're sewing it. So you really wanna be careful to stabilize that and that's what stay stitching does. Just a line of straight stitching with back stitching on either end from here down to center front. And you can feel, I mean, don't stretch it too much, but you can feel that it already gives it a nice stable edge there. All right, next thing we're gonna move on to is marking in that center front pivot point. It's super easy to mark this in yourself. There've been some questions about this, so I wanna show you exactly how to do it. The pivot point at center front, I'm gonna do this with a pen, obviously. You're gonna to wanna to do it with um, chalk or some sort of disappearing ink, but I want you to be able to see this. I love these uh, clear gridded rulers. You're gonna be using this to align the 5 8 of an inch line with the raw edge of the pattern piece. I'm gonna start that on the bottom edge of the facing, aligning 5 8 of an inch, and I'm gonna draw a line at the 5 8 inch mark, and that's our seam allowance too, by the way. I'm gonna do it on this side, and I'm also gonna do it along the center front slash center back of the dress. And the point where those two lines meet is where we're going to pivot, okay? So it's good to have those marked in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew our center front and our center back seam. So you're gonna mark that on all four pieces and then you're gonna put those two pieces together. So right sides together. You're gonna do this in uh, little pairs, okay? So two and two. Let's start with this pair and then you'll do the other pair. So you're gonna pin this all the way down center front slash center back, that long straight edge. And we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna sew along here, pivot at that point, and then stitch the center front slash center back seam. Okay, so let's go on over to the machine. I'm stitching from bottom up to the pivot point of the center front. So I'm just gonna keep stitching along those marked in lines there. And when I get to my pivot point, that little circle I drew in, I'm gonna stop with my needle down lift up my presser foot and I'm going to swing the entire dress around so that I'm now going in this direction. Again, you're going to want to put your presser foot down before you start sewing and I'm going to finish off that seam line along this marked line. And don't forget to backstitch at the end. And now we're ready to press this seam open. The center front seam is sewn. I pressed it open and you wanna press that little flap open as well. And now you'll see that it turns easily to the inside of the dress. 
it does have these little excess um, seam allowances here. So to neaten up the inside of the dress, you can always just trim those away from the V point like that. Okay. So next thing you're gonna do, which I've gone ahead and done because it's pretty simple, is to just sew the front and the back together at the shoulder and at the side seams. Shoulder here, and then at the side seam all the way down. So now it's starting to look like a complete dress. And you're gonna press those seams open. And the next thing you're gonna do, and this is where this dress is really kind of magical, is that this facing just gets turned in the wrong side of the dress and I would pin it matching the seam lines here at the center front center back and at the shoulder seams just fold those in and then you're going to stitch in the ditch to secure it at the shoulder seam and center front and center back points. So if I turn this to the right side, I'm going to stitch right in that little seam line right there where the, where the previous stitching is and try to open it up as much as possible as I'm stitching to really hide my new stitches right in that ditch. <clears throat> and that is called stitching in the ditch. So I would do that on all four points, center front, center back, and each shoulder seam. Once the stitching in the ditch is done, you can just sort of gently press your facings so that stay stitching is um, just turned to the inside of the dress. And it's gonna be a little more turned at center front, which is good because it'll help hide it and you won't see your stay stitching from the outside of the dress. So give it a nice light press there. And then you have a nice completed neckline. So a super easy way to um, sew a neckline and have it finished is that cut on facing. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is turn my dress right side out. Do that off camera here. And we're gonna sew our armhole bindings. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my stitching in the ditch and then we'll come back and sew the armhole facings. We're ready to work on our armhole bias facings. So I have my two facings here. Um, make sure that you have cut them on the bias because they need to be stretchy to go around the curve of the armhole. Okay, we're, I've already sewn one into a ring. I'm gonna sew the other. So you're gonna put it right sides together and sew that short end at 5 eighths of an inch and press it open, which I've already done on this ring right here. Okay, so let's grab our dress. Our little Carmen Miranda fantasy dress here. You can see that I have turned in the cut in facing, cut on facing, and then stitched in the ditch at the um, shoulder seams and at the center front. So now we can focus on finishing the armholes. Okay. I would match this seam on the ring of the facing with the underarm on your dress. So right sides together, you're gonna match those seams and put a pin right there. And we're gonna pin it all the way around and see how it just kind of distributes itself nicely like that. Okay, so I'm gonna start by pinning this all the way around. And I'm gonna tell you that if you hear talking in this video, sort of like background talking. The reason for that is that we have a hairdresser in the studio next to ours. And all day long, he plays music and blows, dries people's hair and they have small talk. So that's what we listen to all day. And sometimes we ask him to turn his music down, but it didn't seem too bad today. But if that's what you hear, that's Josh cutting hair. Okay, so you're gonna do your facing all the way around here. Pin it right sides together. And the next thing you're gonna do is sew it all the way around the armhole at five eighths of an inch, okay? And if you have a free arm on your machine, you're gonna want to use that. And that means you're gonna take off that big part on the lower part of your machine so that you can sew in a ring and put this on your machine like that, sew at five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna do that and come back. 
Okay, I'm gonna show you what one finished binding looks like. And just to stress, I just misspoke. This is not a binding. This is a bias facing, which means that it's turned all the way to the inside of the dress, okay? So you don't see this, uh, this facing at all on the right side. It's completely turned in, and then it's going to be edge stitched here. You can also see the understitching here. So there are two lines of stitching on the inside. So let's uh, let's see how we get to that point. I have sewn the binding on, I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep saying that now. I've sewn the bias facing on this armhole at five eighths of an inch. The next thing we need to do is trim it down to a quarter inch. So you can just trim both seam allowances together down to about a quarter inch. So make sure your scissors are nice and sharp for this. Be careful, you're gonna have to keep turning it around like this and make sure that you're isolating just the seam allowances. Don't cut your beautiful new dress. And there are a few steps to this process, but it really does look beautiful once it's finished. And now that you know this skill, you can apply this to necklines and other armholes on other projects. Okay, so we got those seam allowances out of the way. I would definitely recommend cutting into the curviest part of your armhole. So down around the underarm, just do these little clips, about every half inch. And this will help it turn smoothly without puckers or bumps or anything. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is understitch this facing. We're gonna go to the machine and do that. So I'll describe how to do that when we get to the machine. I'm gonna put my armhole over the free arm of my machine like this. And just um, a note on how this or is oriented. Um, this is the bias facing. These are the seam allowances underneath. You wanna make sure when you put this underneath your presser foot that both seam allowances are underneath the facing, not underneath the dress. I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I want to be stitching just about an eighth of an inch or even a little less next to my seam line. And I'm in a really weird position right now to film, so give me a minute while I situate this. I'm like on the side of my machine so that you guys can see the front. Okay, let's see if I did that right. Yeah, not bad. Okay, I'm gonna back stitch. And now when you're under stitching, you're gonna just, you wanna keep this, and I always tell my students like really open like that, just spread that open. And you're gonna wanna stitch close to that seam line. About a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. It's pretty close. And as you go around, make sure that those seam allowances are underneath your facing. And you can kind of keep checking like with your fingers right here. Okay, so you can see I'm stitching right next to that seam line. So go all the way around, and then we're gonna go back to the table and I'll show you how to finish this off. Okay, I'm understitched all the way around. The next thing you're gonna do is take this over to your ironing board, turn the seam allowance in, and use your understitching to kind of roll out towards the edge like this, okay? And press it. Next step is to take that raw edge and turn it in so you have about a quarter inch doubled there and then press the whole thing together, pin it in place all the way around the armhole and then edge stitch along that folded edge. And that's how you get this beautifully finished bias facing on your armhole. Okay, your neckline is finished, your armholes are finished. Next thing to do is hem the dress. So I would recommend putting it on your dress form or hanging it somewhere for at least 24 hours, letting the bias hang, coming back and um, trimming it so that it's even all the way around. 
And next thing I'm gonna show you is a really simple way to hem this dress. Okay, I just wanna talk about a really simple hemming method, which is just a um, turned up quarter inch hem. The first thing you wanna do is a row of what I call guide stitching all around the hem using a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, you're gonna to go to your ironing board and turn that up so that the guide stitching is just to the inside of the dress, press it, then press up again. So now everything's completely enclosed. And then you don't even really have to pin this because once you press it with some seam, steam, it stays in place. Then you're gonna go edge stitch around, right on that fold, all the way around the hem. And it's gonna look a little bit like that bias facing that we just did on the armhole. Okay, so that's a really simple, easy little hem. And now your dress is finished, except for those shoulder bows and the pockets if you wanna do those. So we're gonna come back in a separate video and talk about those steps. I put my popover dress on my mannequin, and as you can see with one of these little elastic cinch belts from Amazon and a petticoat underneath, it really does have a great fit and flare silhouette. So that is it for part one of the tutorial. Come back next time for part two, where we will be sewing the shoulder bows and the big pockets. All right, see you next time.